Okay, now we want to add the pour spout to this thing, and um, boy, there are about 63 ways to skin this cat, and I'm just going to choose the one that I think works the best in this case, and that's going to involve making a basic change. So we need to go back in time, and SolidWorks is actually a time machine that will warp us back to where we want to go. So let's, um, I can click right here on this little bar at the bottom of my history tree and drag it up above the mirror, and you'll see that our mirror instance goes away, our mirror... Um, operation goes away. And that's because it's as if it hasn't happened yet. It's in the future. So we'll go all the way back to the beginning and nothing has happened. We're back to the very primordial ooze of our part. And I'm going to select the top plane, control click on the top plane and drag it upward to make a duplicate of it. And right here in the middle of the left side bar, I'm going to make it 7 inches offset from the original top plane. And then I'm going to rename that Carafe Top. Now we can drag our history bar back up to the top, thus bringing us back to the future, as it were. And I'm going to select this uh, sketch here and edit it. And if you'll recall, when we created this sketch, we added a dimension for its height to make it 7 inches high. I'm going to delete that dimension. And I can drag this point down for the sake of argument and show you that what I'm going to do is select this uh, top point here, control click on the carafe top plane we just created, and then click coincident. Basically, now, if we commit the changes to this sketch, no matter what we do to this plane, let's say we change this to 5 inches, now our sketch changes, and thus the rest of our model updates, so now we have a 5 inch tall carafe. Now, we don't want that, so I'm going to change that back to 7 inches. <coughs> and um, the reason we created this plane was because we're going to make another sketch now on the front plane. So let's go ahead and make a rectangle, corner to corner. Uh, I don't think we're going to need this top edge, so I'm just going to change that to a construction line. And then select it and control click this top plane and make them uh, collinear. Now, you might say, hey, hey, Adam, why did you need to make this plane? That's just an extra pointless step that you don't have to do. Because really, instead of making it collinear that way, you could have instead selected this edge and that edge and made them collinear and that would still work. And the answer is yes, that would work, but uh, at least for now. But in the long run, I'm telling you, I can't explain why uh, in a short period of time. But the point is you're going to be much happier if you never constrain elements to anything that is not in the tree. If you can avoid it, if you don't see this edge listed here in the tree, then Try not to constrain to it if you can avoid it. So um, since we have this plane listed in the tree, I'm OK with constraining to it. Um, it's going to give us much more robust updating in the future uh, as we get more complexity in our model. I'm going to make this 2 inches wide and inch and a quarter tall. And we want this to be symmetrical across the midplane. So I need to draw an extra line here middle of our sketch. I'm going to change it to a construction line. And then I can control click all three of these lines and over here I get an option for symmetric. That's going to make the two solid lines symmetric across the dotted line. If this were not a dashed line, if I hadn't made it construction geometry, the symmetric option would not have been available to us. So now I can just commit this sketch and we're all done. Now again, uh, you may think, as I used to, that you now, in order to cut out part of this front surface, you might think we need to go curves, uh, project curve, project this curve onto this plane, and then we could go to our surface tools, trim surface, use this as our trim tool, and remove this part of our model. That works, but it's an extra step we didn't have to do. I'm going to undo all that. And it turns out that SolidWorks is pretty clever. If we just use the trim surface without making our projection curve, then it assumes when we select this sketch that we just want to trim along the normal of that sketch. So actually, we didn't have to make the projection at all. It's going to do it automatically for us. I can just go ahead and click in this little area, click the checkbox, and we're done. Now, to make the actual lip of this thing, um, there are, again, several ways we could do this, but uh, this way, is the one that I think is going to work the best for us in the long run. So let's create a line. And this line is going to be where our lip will end up. 
put a dimension on it, and let's just make it a half inch long. And you'll notice that if I drag down, I get a horizontal dimension. Across, I get a vertical dimension. And if I'm really close to my line, I can get a parallel dimension, which is actually what I want. Let's make it a half inch long and put it, I'll just drag it to where a place that I think is kind of appropriate for our spout. And we could constrain this if we cared, but I'm not sure that the dimension matters all that much. OK, so um, now one more thing. Let's go back and make another plane. I could just control click uh, this plane and drag it on down to make another plane. And that's just going to put this plane here at the end of our uh, history tree. Not OK with that. Actually, when I create planes, another best practice for you is to do it always at the beginning of your model. Planes should always happen first, at the beginning of the model, if possible. That way, um, they're the maximum possible usefulness as you move forward. Again, it's hard to explain why um, in short, uh, pithy phrases, but uh, that's the way it is. Let's call this spout bottom. Go back to the future. And I'm just going to go to my surface tools, go over here to curves, and this time I'm going to choose a split line. Split line is just a handy way of taking a surface and breaking it into multiple faces. So I can choose type of split intersection, and then the intersection tool will be our plane, and the surface that we want to split will be this face. Now, if I click this face in the viewport, you'll notice that it lists it as face one. We've selected this face of the surface revolve one. A more robust way to do that is to drill down to this body and choose the actual surface body. This way, instead of saying face one, it says surface trim two. This is going to be, again, it's uh, not totally critical and it might seem finicky, but I think that it's a much better way to go. Let's go ahead and hit the green checkbox and we can hide this plane because we don't need it. And lastly, we need to add the surface that goes through all of this stuff. So let's choose our boundary surface. Boundary surface is a relatively new tool in SolidWorks, and it is really nice and powerful. I'm going to click this first edge, and I clicked it near this top edge, which is why this one, this ball here is green. And if I click this one near the same edge, we get a very nice clean surface with the green balls on the top. Now if I click this edge near the bottom, you'll see that the green ball goes to the bottom and our surface twists probably not what we wanted. So I can right click on that green ball and go down to flip connectors and that'll just flip that for us and fix it right up. Let's change this edge condition to curvature to face and this one to curvature to face as well and that will be our spout. Good enough. Checkbox. And um, all we have to do now is do this last little filled surface and it's also going to be a boundary surface and I'll choose one direction and then click on this box to choose the other direction and that will give us our surface. Now I need to set all these boundary conditions to be curvature across the board even if it warns us we'll just make them all curvature and it looks okay by and large, except in the middle we get a little bit of a frog throat here. I don't know why it's doing that, honestly, um, but uh, we can fix it pretty easily. I just select each of these curves and I'm going to turn up their tangent influence quite a bit. Tangent influence is just a way of um, defining, uh, well, how tight the, the tangency is between here. And um, if you played with it, I think you would get the idea. Anyway, I turned it all the way up to 100% for these two faces, or these two edges, and we get a much better result. Checkbox, and um, there we go. Now we have a nice, smooth carafe surface. And to finish it all off, why don't we just join everything together so that now it's one big surface body. Right now we have four surface bodies. I'd like to make one big surface body, so we'll go to Knit Surface. Choose all of these guys. Checkbox. And now if we look here in the surface bodies, we have one big body. And let's just go ahead and rename that uh, Glass Carafe Outer. And there she is.